Hey everyone, this is Dr. Patrick O'Malley with the Laceration Course. This lecture series is in conjunction with your SI Practice Suture Pads and is designed to give you what you need to know to begin to master the art of suturing. The first video is a detailed look at the different components of your suture kit, so let's get started. First of all, you will notice that you have this silicone pad that has several layers in here. And what we're trying to do is simulate the skin. Now, these layers of silicone, there's a, a, an intricate network of mesh within these layers. And if you kind of zoom in really closely here, you can see the mesh. And what that does is it allows you to have a more realistic experience. It prevents tearing, uh, not completely, but it, it definitely reduces the risk of tearing through uh, with your suture material. So if you look here at these images, again, we're trying to simulate the skin. And your suture needle should enter the epidermis and exit the epidermis on the opposite sides of the wound in a symmetric pattern. So what I want you to do is imagine and visualize that when the pad, uh, when you're using the pad, is that you're trying to exit and enter at the same level in the dermis or even if the, in the hypodermis for really deep injuries. So what I mean by that is you're wanting to enter the skin and exit the skin on the same, uh, same distance from the margin of the wound, and then also trying to exit the dermal layer and enter the dermal layer on the opposite side whenever you are doing a suture. And that's how you get wounds to line up. So it's important to see you know, what real skin looks like, the different layers of the skin, and try to equate that uh, to your suture pad and the, uh, the silicone layers that are here. Now, a really big piece of advice when you are using this kit is that don't try to force the sides of these wounds together. Now, these wounds at baseline have a gap between them. It's not quite the same as real human skin, obviously, so if you really put a lot of tension and a lot of force on these, uh, these, uh, these wounds with your suture thread, over time, you will tear through it. So it's important to really master the techniques and understand the techniques that you're using, but you don't need to you know, try and get 100% you know, uh, approximation and tightness and wound eversion, all things that we'll talk about later. Most important take home, home lesson here is don't apply too much force and tension or you will risk the, uh, the, the chance of the needle or the suture material tearing through the silicone. You're really just trying to learn the technique and not surgically close the wound. So be careful as you can and maximize the life of your pad. All right, so we're going to talk about the instruments. Okay, so we've got five instruments here in, that come included in the kit. And we'll talk a little bit about each one. The first one is the most important, and that's the needle driver. The needle driver's main purpose is to grasp the suture needle and introduce it into the tissue. So most needle drivers will have some kind of a locking mechanism down here, and that's so that you can grasp the needle, remove your thumb and your uh, ring finger, uh, away from the eyelets here, and then you can manipulate and uh, guide the uh, your, your suture needle a lot better and you have much finer control. So that's instrument number one, the needle driver. Number two, pretty self-explanatory, are scissors. These are suture scissors, and it is important for these to be sharp, for the edges to come together nicely, uh, but these are going to be used to cut suture they may also be used in the debridement of tissue for jagged or irregular uh, shaped lacerations and soft tissue injury. You may use scissors for debridement. Included in the kit are two sets of forceps. Both of these are called Adson forceps. One has teeth, the other does not. I'm going to try to get up here and show you. So these have teeth, you can see, and they kind of like a lock and groove right here, um, or tongue and groove, so they fit in together. And what the, the purpose of these are is for you to be able to grasp tissue, hence the name tissue forceps. You also will be grasping the needle very, very, very uh, frequently with this. And I'm going to harp on this. I'm going to 
make sure that that gets pounded in. So whenever you are manipulating your needle, you want, want to use your tissue forceps, okay? So these are the teeth ones. Uh, these may cause some micro trauma to the tissue, so be careful. Also with your silicone pad, just be careful that you're not putting too much pressure. Now with your forceps, you also want to hold them like this, okay? With your thumb on the underside and your index finger on the top, and you can, it doesn't take much pressure, all right? But this is also important for uh, kind of manipulating the tissue, presenting the tissue so that you're able to enter it uh, uh, properly with your suture, all right? So this is the Adson uh, tissue forcep with teeth. There is an Adson tissue forcep without teeth. The edges here, you can see, they have a little bit of groove, so there is a little bit of traction whenever you are holding your needle. Um, maybe less trauma uh, whenever you are trying to manipulate the tissue. All right, and then the last instrument is a scalpel. Okay, this is a scalpel handle. Now, I have to be honest with you, I work in the emergency department in the urgent care setting, and we typically use uh, single-use disposable um, uh, scalpels. But if you want to make any additional uh, defects anywhere on your pad here, um, there are there is this scalpel handle, and you do have some scalpel blades. And what you do with this is you are obviously uh, being very safe and trying to avoid any uh, accidental sticks. You can keep the uh, scalpel blade in the aluminum foil and you want to be able to kind of line things up. Handful of different ways to do this, but essentially what you're trying to do is slide the blade onto this little groove right here and slide it down, holding the scalpel in the foil uh, and placing it into the groove. And then when it's time to remove it, you basically lift up the proximal end, lift up and slide off and make sure you dispose of this properly. Uh, again, this is not something that I do personally in the emergency department, but if you are in the OR, uh, if you are a student, you will definitely spend some time in the OR and will be expected to know how to uh, reload scalpels. All right, the last components of the kit are a wide variety of sutures. I just grabbed some silk uh, here, but it comes with, uh, I think, about 20 packs of suture of varying uh, materials and varying sizes. It's important for you to be familiar with these. Use uh, different sutures, get comfortable with them, get familiar with them. And then the last thing is your suture, or it's the uh, this little carrying case right here. So everything fits in here nicely, uh, even the pad. So you can put this in your uh, backpack, briefcase, whatever, travel around with it and get some practice uh, in your downtime. So that wraps up this video and our talk on the contents of your suture kit. Thank you for joining and see you next time. Hey everyone, this is Dr. O'Malley with the Laceration Course. If you truly want to master the art of suturing and laceration management, you need my course. What we talk about in these videos here on YouTube really only scratches the surface. This online course has everything that you must know in order to take care of patients with lacerations. You can get the course with or without CME credit. We talk about everything that you need to know to properly manage lacerations, including anatomy, pharmacology, microbiology, advanced suture techniques, and so much more. If you're a student or a resident and really want to stand out on your clinical rotations, you need this course. Bottom line is that we're all here to learn how to be able to provide for better patient care. For more information, go to www.thelacerationcourse.com slash yoursci, where you can learn more about a 25% off discount for your Yoursci Practice Suture Kit customers. Don't forget to subscribe to The Laceration Course on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter.